Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Must Have Mods, the series where I showcase must have mods from various categories. Everybody's got a list of mods they can't play without, and hopefully today you'll discover a mod or two to add to that list. Alright, let's get into it. Skyrim. Get up. Have you ever hesitated to join the Imperial Legion or Stormcloaks? Well, I won't blame you. After all, who wants to follow orders from an Emperor's simp or a known racist? But worry not, how about we consider another option? Join neither of them and become High King yourself. Conquest of Skyrim is a very ambitious mod that allows you to create your own government, raise an army, and manage an economy, with the end goal being to become High King. But that's just scraping the tip of the iceberg. This mod has many features and a huge learning curve. But I figured rather than listing and going through all of its features, I'd share my experience with it instead. It's Turdas, 21st of last seed. Umbrell has had enough of Tullius' simping, and after deserting the Simperial Legion, it was time to begin our own faction. Our faction's name? The Dommy Mommy Dominion. Our banner? Wabam. Truly a masterpiece to rally the greatest simps. But we're first going to need to conquer some land to start our conquest. So after massacring, I mean liberating Robber's Gorge, and planting our banner down, we started plotting our conquest. Starting a faction is no easy feat, so we need to recruit some Dommy Mommies to help us. Uthgred the Unbroken will be our steward. She'll help us manage our economy, trade, and send messages to the other leaders. Janessa will be second in command. She's going to help us recruit troops, issue orders, plan invasions, and purchase siege equipment. Adriana Vinci will be our blacksmith. We'll need her to manage and upgrade our troops' equipment. And finally, Serana will be our first commander. Commanders can hunt for food, garrison cities, and follow us around. Additionally, every commander can lead a group of up to 20 troops. To win wars, we'll need more commanders, but we'll worry about that later. For now, let's meet up at HQ with our crew. In order to raise and maintain our armies, we'll need four key resources. Coin for recruiting troops, upgrades, and buying other resources. Food for our faction to survive. Every person in our faction requires one unit per day. Metal for upgrading our troops. And finally, wood for building upgrades. But first things first, we need food. So after depositing my life savings into our treasury, I started importing food from the Stormcloaks. And I figured it'd be best if we take out the Imperial Legion first. So, for now, we'll be buddy buddies with the Stormcloaks and trade with them. Of course, importing food costs money though. So I captured a bunch of mines and bought some slaves. I mean, hired some miners to collect metal that I could sell. I then put all the gold from adventuring and questing into hiring more miners and some guards. Bandits still attack our outposts every now and then, but thankfully we have enough guards to maintain order and protect our precious land. Initially this whole conquest thing was pretty expensive, but at a certain point our economy took off and we finally started making profits. We conquered more outposts and mines and eventually moved our HQ to Fort Fellhammer. I then appointed two new Dommy Mommy commanders I came across my travels and started recruiting troops for our armies. I then commanded these armies to hunt for food. Now we no longer needed to import food from the Stormcloaks. Instead, we could export it to them for coin. Two weeks have passed. The Dommy Mommy Dominion is thriving. We've set up more outposts and amassed six armies. After upgrading my army and purchasing a siege catapult, it was finally time for us to declare war on the Empire. Our first target, the Reach. And why? You see, we need the mines in the Reach to raise an even stronger army. Let the invasion begin. The battle was bloody. Many simps were lost. But we did it. The Reach was ours. To maximize profits, I upgraded our farms, mines, and settlements. Our next target, Falkreath Hold, for all its wood. Oh, whoa, not that kind of wood. With Falkreath conquered, our dominion became self-sufficient. We no longer needed to worry about key resources. However, there was still some expected resistance. Tullius was sending his armies to try and take our cities, so I garrisoned some of my armies to keep them protected. We then pushed onward. We conquered Whiterun and Hjalmarch, and finally, Hafingar. But we weren't done yet. 
We then declared war on the Stormcloaks, swooping in from the north, taking the Pale and Winterhold. We were like Thanos, but instead of collecting Infinity Stones, we were collecting Holds. We then pushed in from the south, taking the Rift. There was nothing Ulfric could do. The Day of Reckoning was at hand. And just like that, the Dami Mami Dominion conquered Skyrim. I then sentenced Ulfric and Tullius to death by Snoo Snoo, and replaced all the Jarls with Dami Mommies, ushering in a new age. Conquest of Skyrim is an incredible mod. It changes how you approach the game. You start to see everything through a different lens. It's almost like you're playing another game. However, it's still a work in progress mod, and so you might not want to use it on your main save as certain things can break, but I still highly recommend starting a fresh save to try this out. Starting a conquest and questing around pairs up really well. It's a very unique gameplay loop, and I've honestly never had this much fun in Skyrim in 10 years. Difficulty is a tool we can use to craft amazing gaming experiences, but sometimes, to have certain experiences, limitations have to be in place for them to happen. I personally look at FromSoft games for inspiration when modding my Skyrim. I enjoy the challenge these games have to offer and their intended experience. But Skyrim will never be Dark Souls, Elden Ring, or Sekiro, and nor should it. However, we can still use them as reference points to craft a masochi- I mean, enjoyable experience. Wait, what? With that said, here's an amazing mod for those looking to increase Skyrim's difficulty mechanically. Here's Everyone's Stamina Matters, an SKSE plugin that adds a lot of depth to the stamina system. ESM implements attack stamina consumption and prevents the player and enemies from attacking if they don't have enough stamina. This simple change alters combat in a refreshing way. Fights will have an ebb and flow, with combatants switching to offensive and defensive states. This also applies to any creatures, so it's not just for humanoids. Ranged attacks, blocking, bashing, and jumping will now require and consume stamina as well. However, stamina consumption and regeneration won't be constant all the time. ESM uses new formulas to determine this. I won't fully explain these formulas, but I will mention some factors that are taken into account so you can get a rough idea of how these formulas work. Stamina consumption is influenced by the actor's current stamina the weight of the weapon or armor they have currently equipped, and their relevant skill level. So attacking with a dagger at full stamina while having a high one-handed skill level will consume far less stamina than attacking at low stamina with a warhammer while having a low two-handed skill level. Furthermore, jumping with a light cuirass will also consume far less stamina than jumping with a heavy one. Stamina regeneration is influenced by current health and stamina values, the weight of all worn equipment, and your carry weight. However, the health and stamina variables aren't constant. You'll actually regenerate stamina faster when you have more health and stamina. But overall, stamina regeneration has been increased, so combat will feel much more fast-paced. But it's still calculated. ESM also alters NPC movement speeds. By default, NPCs with less than 20% stamina will move half as fast, allowing you to escape from exhausted enemies. Thankfully, you are able to tweak settings for ESM's features and formulas. You can configure your setup to disable features such as jump stamina consumption or enemy movement debuffs. So ESM is wonderful for those like me who like to waste hours tweaking and playing around with various configurations and having no friend. ESM overhauls the stamina system in a great way, and by introducing limitations, it completely changes the way you'll approach combat. You'll actually have to use your brain, unlike in vanilla. Hopefully ESM continues to be developed further. I'd love to see more features, and maybe even perhaps complex and immersive formulas to take an actor's breast size into account. Skyrim's modding community is currently in the golden era of animation. Never before have we seen animations released on such a large scale and with such quality, so I feel that it's appropriate that I showcase some of them. Until recently, magic animations haven't really been touched. Well, okay, wait, there was that one booby magic mod from way back when, but Let's, let's not talk about that. Here's Goetia Animations, an early access mod that replaces spellcasting animations. Most animations related to spellcasting have been replaced, from sprint, walking, and standing idols, to charging and casting. Vera Levy, the author of this mod, has really knocked it out the park this time. Goetia Animations has a heap of quality animations, though it did come at the cost of some sleep. Nevertheless, this mod makes playing a mage extremely refreshing to the point where it's actually motivated me to play as a Spellblade. I've stared at the same animations for about 10 years now, so I'll take almost anything at this point. But man, are we blessed to have a whole animation pack and with such top-notch quality. 
If you're interested in trying out Goetia Animations, consider supporting Vero Levy on Patreon. There's something childishly fun in destroying furniture in games, and it's something I find it hard to articulate in words. It's just satisfying, like popping bubble wrap or making weird noise in front of the fan. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Destructible Scar. With this mod, you can now destroy furniture. Though it might seem dumb and trivial, this mod goes a long way to making the game feel more immersive and interactive. It's so immersive that even the items in barrels will be dropped when you destroy them. Not all furniture is destructible though, but most will be. So currently barrels, chairs, Nordic pots and urns, some tables, and bookshelves are destructible. Just be a little careful though, because destroying furniture is illegal in populated areas. Stop right there, criminal scum! Though Skyrim is a single player experience, this next mod changes that, but not in the way you'd might think. Here's Building Bridges, a mod that lets you view and leave messages for other players to see in game, just like in Elden Ring. The best part is you can leave messages in any interior or exterior cell from almost any mod and official DLCs. You'll also see messages from both special and anniversary edition players. You can like messages to improve their rating, and there's a progression system. As your messages get higher ratings, you'll reach new levels. Having a higher level lets you write more messages that are longer. Thankfully, you can hide certain messages to make them disappear if you don't want them to be there. But unlike in Elden Ring, players aren't limited to using predefined phrases and words. You have much more freedom and creativity in what you want to write, which might sound like a bad idea, but there's a report system to help keep things in check. Overall, this is by far one of the most creative and fun mods I've ever tried. So consider grabbing it and building some bridges. Now here's a useful tool everyone should have, QUI. This mod adds a suite of UI tools, tweaks, and fixes. You can open QUI by pressing F11. From this menu, you can explore plugins and select from a variety of categories to help you find certain items you can add to your inventory. Additionally, you can show or hide specific elements of the main menu using its configuration files. By default, this mod already includes the Stay at System page fix, but you can configure the default page to another one instead. QUI is a great alternative to Add Item Menu, which is only for Special Edition, so for those playing on Anniversary Edition, well, you'll definitely want this. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Also, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. My lovely patrons make it possible for me to keep producing the content you're watching while I study at uni. I'm also thinking of releasing exclusive Patreon rewards later down the road, but more on that some other time. Alright, take care lads and lasses, and see you next time.